hi, welcome back. Um, today I want to do a little demonstration for you of finger sandwiches, tea sandwiches. Uh, lately uh, with uh, the pandemic, we've been in the house quite a bit and trying to think of new and creative ways to kind of use up things that I have around the house and just try to liven things up. And since we're not eating out really at this time, to try to also have something kind of fancy but very inexpensive and economical as well. So I decided to make some tea sandwiches to show you. Um, tea sandwiches can have any filling in them um, and they're really about the filling and less about the bread. Um, you can put anything in there. I have today going to do three traditional, the most traditional being the cucumber sandwich. Uh, I prepared these uh, English hothouse cucumbers, thinly sliced them, and of course they were very crunchy when I first sliced them as they should be crisp and fresh. Um, I wanted them to be a little bit more pliable and bendable for the sandwiches, so I salted them down with just a little handful of kosher salt and let them sit for 20 or 30 minutes so that they would render out some of their liquid. It would also uh, tenderize them and give them some flavor. And then I just gave them a quick rinse and blotted them dry uh, with a, a clean paper towel. Um, and then I also have egg salad. This is literally two eggs, hard cooked, uh, I chop them up, add a little bit of mayo, a little bit of pickle relish, a little salt and pepper, a little uh, dry mustard, and boom, I have a little egg salad filling. It's important to know that I chopped it very finely. You don't want to have big pieces in your, in your tea sandwiches. And also a little bit of chicken salad. And this was literally a little bit of breast meat that was left after we had a rotisserie chicken roasted. And you're not going to throw that meat out, but you're like, oh, what do I do with that? So I, I just picked the meat and stored it. And then again, I fine chopped the chicken, a little bit of salt and pepper, a little bit of mayo, and left it a little bit more on the dry side. You also don't wanna have fillings that are super runny because you're gonna find that as you're cutting the small types of sandwiches that it's gonna squeeze out too much. I also have a little bit of whipped salted butter. Um, unsalted is okay as well, but I find it's not quite seasoned enough um, for my taste. Uh, so I go with salted when I have it. It's just at room temperature and I just I just kind of whipped it up with this rubber scraper here just to make it easily spreadable. The most common spreads for any types of sandwiches will be butter, mayonnaise, or vegetable spreads. Um, in this case, I'm going to use butter for all of mine because that's kind of the traditional way and, and really it's just a matter of taste. I like that and prefer that over mayonnaise. Um, and I have two kinds of breads here today. Um, as I said before, we've been in, we've been, you know, kind of isolated in the house with pan, with the pandemic, and I've had plenty of time to bake, so I actually made myself a fresh loaf of bread to use for my tea sandwiches, and it's just regular white bread. Um, and I've left it whole, I haven't cut it yet. But another thing that you can use, um, any Walmart or Barton's grocery store carries, this is called Pepperidge Farm Very Thin. Very Thin Bread makes an excellent tea sandwich and it comes in white or wheat. Um, these are also excellent if you're looking to cut out a few calories and wanna make a sandwich because they're only about 40 calories per slice and they're nice and thin. So that's another good option as well. Um, you could use rye, you could use pumpernickel, you could use like little biscuits. Anything you want to do can become a tea sandwich and any filling you want to use can also make it so. So don't be limited with this. The sky's the limit, you can put anything in there. Even peanut butter and jelly inside the very thin bread becomes a fancy tea sandwich. And then this way you have something for the kids. Grandma probably loves some egg salad and the chicken salad. And honestly, the cucumbers are my personal fave. All right, so I wanna show you how to make this. Now, the thing I would most like to have to bake my sandwiches on, which is the most convenient, would be a Pullman loaf. A Pullman loaf is a long pan bread that's made in a square pan that is long and rectangular, and it has a lid that slides across, and the whole loaf of bread bakes inside of this pan with the lid across it. So when you take it out, you can slice it long ways and get very long pieces. So you kind of get an idea from using my regular white loaf of how that would be done, except that the Pullman loaf would be twice as long. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually, instead of like traditional bread we'd get in, in, in the bag, will be sliced this way, I'm actually gonna slice it the long way. So I'm gonna kind of shake things up a bit. Move this so you get a better view. 
So I'm gonna slice down. You can see I have a very long serrated knife. And I'm just going to take off just the just enough of the crust. And I want it to be thin. Now at home, if you don't have very thin bread, you can use regular sliced sandwich bread and make a tea sandwich. I mean, if, it, if you cut it in different shapes, it's still going to have the effect you're looking for. I'm going to cut four slices out of this to do two different kinds. And then I'm also going to use the Pepperidge Farm Bread just so that you can see the difference and know that, you know, people don't always have time to make their own bread. We can use convenience products that are sold at the store and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Right. So you want to lay them out. Right. And I'm gonna put spread on all of them. I'm gonna put the unsalted whipped butter on top of all of these. Put some on and don't be stingy. I always say that, don't be stingy. This isn't meant to be a diet food, but since you are eating small portions, you really are saving a bit on calories that way. And you'll be amazed at how little ingredients you need to make a large platter of these. Don't have to go all the way to the absolute edge with your spread because we're gonna cut the crusts off. I'm gonna use the chicken and the egg salads for these. And it's the same deal. Don't go necessarily all the way to the edge because you're gonna cut that bit off anyway. So waste not, want not. Although I have to say that a lot of times when I'm cooking in the kitchen and we have little scraps, that's always the nice part to taste because you know you'll put these out. It'll be maybe a few hours later before you serve your food and this way you can get a taste of everything. All right. Spread the egg salad. And you can see I didn't go quite all the way to the edge. Okay. And the chicken salad. and then I'm just gonna top them. And then cutting them individually. So there are different sizes and shapes you can make. So for these, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do squares and I'm gonna do rectangles. So I want to square them up a little bit because I ultimately want them to be square. And remember what I said, we're gonna cut off the edges you can see I'm trying to cut off as little as I can because I want, of course, to eat that. I want to have it for my guests. And if you've got just a little bit, you can just take it off. Remember, they're not going to be perfect. Mine aren't perfect. The bread is not perfect. It's not exactly square. All right, I want to cut this into rectangular shapes and I want to make them equal as much as possible so I'm going to cut them in halves and then I want to have about a two inch piece so I'm going to cut these each into thirds so these are like a like a finger rectangular piece you can also chill them before you cut them to help them be a little bit um, colder and more rigid and then I just have a little tiered tray here just to put a few pieces out Uh, and then the next one is our chicken salad. And I'm gonna cut this one into squares. So I'm gonna do the same process over again, cutting off the, the crust, the edge. And then cut them into squares. So basically gonna do the same exact thing 
Only this time I'm gonna go one more step and cut them in half again. Place them down. I'm not gonna be able to get them all on. You can make them bigger or smaller. It's entirely a matter of choice. Go with that. I'm gonna set these guys aside. Now I'm gonna do the cucumber sandwiches and these I'm gonna cut into triangles. The process is the same. I'm gonna butter each piece. I started for all these sandwiches, I had about four tablespoons of unsalted butter, so that gives you just an idea of how much you'll need to get out to soften. And you can see I've gone through almost all of it. You could use mayonnaise if you prefer. A lot of people do, but I'm very old school with this and I just really prefer the taste of the butter. You can go as heavy or as light as you like. Don't overdo it too much or you're gonna find that things slip around um, and slide out as you're trying to cut. All right, now I'm going to lay out the cucumbers and you want to shingle them, which means that you're gonna kind of lay them down and again, try not to go all the way to the edge because of course we are going to trim. English cucumbers are really the best to use. Uh, and the reason why is, is that they have a more compact sort of form of seeds in there. You don't find that you get as many big pieces from that. And be sure to cut them thin. If they're too thick, when you try to then cut the sandwich itself, it's gonna really come to pieces. Alrighty, so I'm gonna to top them off, press them down, and remember, you can refrigerate them once they're assembled before cutting them. And in some cases, I would recommend that, uh, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and just go with it. So same deal, you wanna cut off your sides. Remember that this is that Pepperidge Farm very thin white bread I'm using. And then finally, I'm gonna cut them corner to corner, kind of press on them and then push down and come through. Sawing back and forth is helpful at first to get through the first layer of bread, but if you continue to saw through the cucumber part, you're gonna get frustrated with it. So saw a bit, push down, pull through, all right? And what's great about the cucumber sandwich is that it provides you a little bit of a different color there and the different shape provides a little bit more of an eye appeal. Again, saw through, push down, pull through. Saw, push down, pull through. Right. I'll add just a couple more. You can see I'm running out of room. This is just a little footed tray that I have here, a little flatter um, that came with my, with my dishes set and I think it just makes it look nice. Um, I don't have any fresh parsley or um, little grape tomatoes, but that would be a nice addition to garnish this plate off to give it a little bit more color and a little more pizzazz. Um, what I think is most ideal about this is the very small cost that's involved and the fact that you can really use up a lot of the ingredients that you have around in your kitchen. Uh, some other great ideas for fillings, cream cheese and uh, chopped up maraschino cherries makes a little sweet one. Or um, just olive tamponade. Again, peanut butter and jelly. You know, this way you can make something that just, it, it, there's such a, a variety of different tastes and flavors, you can, you can suit everybody with a, a nice, nice little tray of tea sandwiches.